Hello and welcome to the Garage Series for Office 365. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Frank Ciappone. So Frank, we've got a really exciting show in store. We're going to show you how you can get Office for free if you're a student. Yeah, just today we announced it's even easier now to find out if you are eligible for free Office from your school and how you can download it onto all your devices. Of course, we'll show you how to check if you can download Office for your devices. And if you didn't catch our show back in January, we're going to get you up to speed with all the great updates we've made since then. And we'll show you some cool things you can do with Office once you have it on your machines. Right, but before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, any active student from a qualifying school has access to Office for free. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Frank, we've had this program for a while. What's changed, and if I'm a student, how do I know if I'm eligible? Well, if you go to a school that purchases Office for their faculty and staff, then you qualify for free Office from your school. And all you have to do is go to office.com slash getoffice365 and sign in and check to see if you're eligible. We've made great changes, right? We've really changed the process. IT doesn't have to do any work now to make you an account. Yeah, they used to have to give you an account before you can go sign in. Don't have to do that anymore. You just go check your eligibility and sign in. So if you're new to Office 365, let's take a look at what you get with the service. You get free email. And you also get calendaring. File sharing and syncing. Conferencing. Social tools. We'll stop here, though, because these were the things that we talked about in January when we did our show for education. And these are things that IT has to actually do work for. But these last two, a terabyte of cloud storage. And for millions of students around the world, free office. And these are things that, again, IT doesn't have to do anything to get you started. These are things that when you sign up, you just get both those services. Absolutely. Just go sign in. So we've done a lot of work, too, in the last couple of months, right? Yeah, we continue to improve the service as we talked about. We released recently Office for iPad, which is so big in, in education. And that means if you have Office 365 Pro Plus, you can sign in on your iPad and actually edit on those apps. We've also released OneNote for Mac, Office Mix, which I'm going to show you in just a bit, and a ton new device support. Let's talk about all that device support, because there is really, regardless of what device you use, whether you've got a PC or Mac, even a Chromebook running Office Online, you can use that. All the major smartphone platforms are, are supported as well. And iPad, you can download that now from the App Store. And we have, we've announced that Android tablet support is coming also. But beyond all of this, the great thing is if you have more than one device, they are all connected through the Office 365 Cloud. So if I start building documents, say in my PC, I can get to those from my phone, from my tablet. It's just all there and all of it follows me. It really is Office on all your devices. Right, we've done a ton of work as well in terms of things that's going to be coming up. We've talked about things like Delve, where you can actually get information trending around you without even searching for it. It just shows up in your feed. Very cool stuff. Beyond Delve, we're looking at things like modern attachments. So instead of sending email attachments, you can have all the security and the collaboration benefits of just sending an attachment straight from your email that's stored actually in your OneDrive so that people can do things like co-authoring against that document and so many more things that we're actually coming out with in the next couple of months. All right, so I think we've talked enough. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, like we said, go to get go to office.com, get Office 365, and check if you're eligible. All you have to do is click on the Students tab and the big green button. Once you're here, enter your email address. We'll do a background check to make sure you it is a valid email address and that it comes from a school that offers free office for their students. And then you said, great, go check your email. And then from there, just go to your, your standard email account. Right. Once the email pops into your inbox, then you'll just go and click on the link inside the email to continue setting up your account. Okay. So then all you have to do is enter your name and create a password for yourself. We do check your birth date to make sure that you're over 13 and then hit start. Wow, so that was really easy. So now I'm basically done. I've got an account. You've got an account, and then it's going to take you to a page that shows you how to download Office. And you notice the cool thing about this page is if you're logging in with a Mac, it'll automatically know you're on a Mac, and it'll download the bits for a Mac instead of a PC. Very, Just, very cool. So, But once you've got Office installed, then show some of the stuff you can do with it. So one of the cool things that you could do with it is Office Mix. We just announced Office Mix just a few months ago. And it is a PowerPoint add-in that lets you 
record your presentations right inside PowerPoint and then publish them online at officemix.com. So think of if you're a teacher and you want to flip your classroom, you could record a lesson or a lecture right within PowerPoint, publish it, and then your students can watch it as homework at home and then come to class ready for further discussion. Or if you're a student and you're doing a project, it's a great way to present out what you've done in that project. Right. So, so you got a project here. It looks like we're both history buffs. I am a history buff and uh, I had this PowerPoint presentation on Napoleon's march into Russia of 1812. It was a complete disaster for him. So uh, I am going to go to the Mix tab. I downloaded this add-in from OfficeMix.com. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool things I can do is just uh, start a recording right from within PowerPoint. It takes me to this backstage area where I can get ready. I can do video or audio. And I'm going to add some video here. Make sure my camera is set up and I look all nice and pretty in there. Perfect. I can also change the color of my ink that I can use to annotate on the slides. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change to a green and I'm going to use a medium width ink. And then I just, when I'm ready, I just start recording. And now I'm recording my presentation. I can advance the slide if I want to. I can easily annotate right on the screen. I can circle things. I can highlight them as needed. And then I can move on. When I'm done, I simply hit stop recording. And now I have a chance to preview my recording. And if I like it, I can keep it. If I don't, I can discard it and start over again. Great. I like this recording. It's just fine. And so I'm going to close it. And you'll notice I'm back in editing in PowerPoint. And I can continue to edit those slides just like I could before. I could resize this video. I can even move the slides around if I want to. to rechange the order. It'll wow. remember what was recorded onto that slide. Excellent. You talked about screen recording earlier. So let's see how that works. So one more thing I'll show you here is I found this great chart uh, called Charles Menard's, you know, uh, graphic on Napoleon's march it's into a canonical Ru chart about Napoleon's it, march into it's Russia. Absolutely right? fantastic. You can see by the bandwidth how how much uh, Napoleon's army was just decimated as they marched into Moscow, and then as they retreated, how it continued to just get smaller mm -hmm. and smaller. So this is a great chart, but it was built in the 1800s, right? So we could do right. something better today, especially if we're using Power Map. Power Map is part of the Power BI suite of tools. It's absolutely fantastic. What it allows you to do is take standard data in a spreadsheet and give it a presentation or a view um, visually that you haven't been able to do before. OK. So this is the same data from Menard's chart, right? That's exactly right. I actually found this spreadsheet. It has all the data in the chart, including cool. latitude, longitude, and all that stuff. I'm going to go into Insert and, and uh, Launch Power Map. And once this launches, you'll see instantly that the longitude and latitude was mapped right into the map. And so just to make sure that we're in the right location, I'm going to add map labels to this. OK. And there were a couple of other pieces of information in that spreadsheet that you saw. There was, um, there was a date element. So I'm going to add a date element so we can actually watch as uh, Napoleon's army advances. And so we do want to know, it's like, how are, when are they advancing and when are they retreating? So I'm going to add that. I like this label, so I'm going to leave this label and I'm going to put it over here and I'm just going to resize it. And then I'm also going to, we want to know what was the size of Napoleon's army from when he started to when he finished. So I'm going to add that component as well. But I know that if you're a Frenchman in the 1800s, things like cold and temperature really affect you too, right? It absolutely played a part in this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add another layer onto this power map. And on this layer, what we'll do is we will add the temperature. And so I, I've got, we had a temperature column there, so I'll, I'll add that as well. I'll move this down here. And so I didn't like the columns uh, for the temperature, so what I'm actually going to do is use a bubble map instead. So let's put the bubble map in there. And I don't like that purple because that doesn't really symbolize temperature or heat or anything like that. So I'm actually going to change that to an icy blue. And so you'll be able to see that turn to an icy blue. And as that bubble grows larger, you know it's getting colder and colder out there. Yeah. So, so now we're all set. Now the last thing to do is sort of just resize it to make sure that uh, it looks good. So right in there, so we can actually see. And now we're all set. So now let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. And as you said, that we can capture our screen. So we're going to actually do a screen recording. I'll click on that. It allows me to identify what part of the screen I want to record. I want to record the whole thing. So I just click the whole screen. And now I'm ready to go. And up here, you'll notice that I can record audio right over at the same time as I'm capturing screens. I hit the record button. It'll count me down. And now I'm recording my screen. And I could talk about Napoleon's march into Russia. 
and I can show it on a power map. And once it's done, and once I'm done talking about it, all I need to do is hit stop recording. It's going to ask me if I want to insert it into the PowerPoint. And now, same thing. I can edit it. I can resize it. I could do whatever I want. And it's ready to go. And now I have this great power map inserted right, right into my PowerPoint presentation. Once I'm done with that, all I need to do is upload the presentation to Office Mix, and then others will be able to watch it and consume it. So now Menard's chart is in the 21st century. Very cool stuff. But beyond this, we've done some great things with OneNote too, right? So I want to show you one more tool. It's called the, uh, the OneNote Classroom Setup Tool. And actually, I want to go into my Internet Explorer and show you here. I had this classroom set up and I want to create a notebook, a OneNote notebook that my entire class can use. But I don't want each of the students to be able to see the other student section. Right. So the classroom creator really lets me set it up so that the teacher can see everybody's sections, but a student can only see their section and a section that they can collaborate with others okay. on. So let me Makes just sense. show you real quick. It's an app in the store. It's called the Classroom Notebook Creator. And all you have to do is click on that. And then it takes you through this wizard that lets you easily set up your OneNote for your entire classroom. So I'm going to create a new classroom notebook. I'm going to give it a name. Let's continue with our history theme, History 101. Now it's super simple. There's all the sections that it's going to create. I'll just leave those uh, uh, automatically set, but you can change them any way you want to. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to add students, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just add students um, to the notebook so that they will have access. Not only will they have access to the notebook, but they'll have their own section within the notebook. So there's one student um, and that's the sections for that student. I'm going to create, now I'm going to create the, the notebook. And it only takes a couple of minutes to set up. And I actually happen to have one created right here. So this is what the notebook looks like now. And this is really great because the teacher can see all the notes from the students. Students have their own kind of private area that the other students can't see when they're taking notes in class. Notice these tabs at the top. I have, I have three students in the class. When they go into their OneNote, all they can see is their section. Yep. But they also have this collaboration space here that allows them to, to add and edit and work on things together uh, that they can all uh, edit together, but they can't get to the other, um, to the other sections. And that's really powerful because we've seen uh, places where people have stopped using the printed out handouts for homework, even in like the third grade, right? where they're using OneNote exclusively to not only do their homework, but also hand it back into their teacher. Yeah, I met a math teacher who did all her worksheets. They printed them to OneNote, they saved them in OneNote, and then the students would just work on the worksheets right within the OneNote. And so the teacher could see all their work as it's being done, and they wouldn't have to turn anything in. So no lost homework, there was no missing assignments because it was all right there in the OneNote. It was a really fabulous tool, and the students right. and the teachers all loved it. Super cool. So that's only scratching the surface because there's so much that you can do with Office. But before we wrap up today's show, Let's have a look at the trivia question. True or false, any active student from a qualifying school has access to offers for free. So of course the answer was true. Of course it is. You can go right now to office.com, get Office 365 to determine if you qualify from your school. Wow, that's exciting. So you can get Office, you can start using it. We saw a lot of great things once you have it across OneNote. Mix, power map, all these great things, right? It's a fabulous tool inside the classroom. Start using it today. Right, and we're just scratching the surface here. So all of these updates, all the things that we show about Office 365, you can catch that on The Garage on Wednesday at Microsoft.com slash garage. Follow us on Twitter at Office Garage. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.